and we're on. Good afternoon. This is another episode of Metaphysically Speaking. Thank you so much for coming and joining me again. I'm Mystic Madison, and today I have a special guest. I have Shishi O'Donnell with me. Shishi is interesting, and she's going to tell you in a second about what she does, but she specializes in angel readings, angel healings, and a lot of other stuff. So go ahead. Hi. Thank you so much for having me, You're Madison. Welcome. It's wonderful to be here. It's the Christmas season. That's my favorite time of year. I already put my trees up, one white and gold and one uh, bright rainbow colors. Little ones, not big. Oh, wow. Are yeah. they like this size? No, not that little. <laughs> By the way, I, I didn't mention, but this is our Christmas special, our pre-Christmas special to like kind of like kick off the holiday season special. And that's why I brought you because you are so um, kind of like holiday spirit <laughs> embodied. I mean, oh, thank you. She, I've done a lot of events with you and she comes with different different costuming, usually angel wings to signify what she does. And she has those in other colors, by the way. So, um, so yeah, I thought, I thought that you would be the perfect person to kind of kick off like this festive time. Thank you. Yeah. I, I do love Christmas and I, I do think the meaning behind the season when, I mean, when you look at what, what it is intending is family time, friend time, love, celebration, joy. And, you know, there are a lot of angels around as well and angels in art with Christmas and so forth. And angels are um, messengers of love from God. So that in Greek, angelus means messenger. So everyone has at least two guardian angels from birth that are with them, you know, and they're always there cheering you on to be the highest version of yourself and believing in you. And they only see your um, most beautiful self. They don't see character flaws. They don't see anything negative. They only see your light and they're always causing your greatness, so to speak, behind the scenes. They can't really intervene unless it's a life-saving measure because obviously you're not going to go before your time you have a predestined time that you agreed to leave mm -hmm. and there you know if someone's going to be in a car accident they will actually jump in there are many many stories of angels intervening and saving people's lives that had a purpose to continue on earth so that you're never going to be that's one way they intervene but unless you ask them for help they typically don't mm -hmm. intervene in your life mm -hmm. so a great way to start having really fun miracles in your life is to start inviting angels in to help you with every area of your life from parking spaces to relationships to finances to everything you need. Yay. And do you think that this is, you know, it's, it's funny that we don't focus on angels all year long. Like this is the time of the year that we actually focus on them around Christmas and the holidays. And I think that people tend to forget that they can call upon them for all times of the year. That's true, yeah. Where I did do. you get your hat, by the way? I just, I was gonna ask you that I in the got it at a festival called Lightning in a Bottle. Oh, wow. It's a, it's a festival, it was in Santa Barbara, that's where. Is, where is that festival. like, uh, Lightning in a Bottle, is that, does that have anything to do with metaphysical stuff? Or it they like have a, really a lot of festival. beautiful me me metaphysical speakers, yeah. Wow. It's, it's like a transformational festival. You'll have to there's... tell me next time. <laughs> yeah, it's in <laughs> May, it's the end of May. It cool. is fantastic. So, um, so, she, she, like, I think that, you know, I, I, you never actually shared the story with me about how you really started to get involved in angel healings and what pulled you towards, I mean, we can all say we love angels, but you've actually made a career out of creating that in your work. So what actually pulled you in that direction? Was it something that happened when you were young or? Mm. I have always loved angels and angel pictures and the idea of angels, but I didn't actually think angels were real and actively doing things on planet earth today. And I had a dramatic wake up call um, when my sister passed away suddenly of, a, of an unknown illness. Her autopsy actually says fever of unknown origin was the cause of death. So that really shocked me. This was 1997, it was a while ago. And um, I am the oldest of seven brothers and sisters. So. She was the fourth sister. I was very close to her. She was very healthy. So to have that shockingly happen out of the blue really caused me to reevaluate everything in life from all my beliefs. You know, I was raised Catholic and 
I even went so far. I, at that time, I was 29. Um, it was 1997. Was she was she an older sister? Or younger? She was younger. She was wow. 20 when she passed. Wow. So That's that was young. even more. Yeah. <laughs> so, but that really made me go through this major dark night of the soul for about six months. So a dark six months of the soul where I went just like, I dropped everything. I stopped TV, a media fast, no news, no music, not even any regular music. And I just started like praying and like asking God for help. And a few people gave me books. The one book that pulled me out of my depression that I'll be forever grateful to the girl who gave it to me is called Embraced by the Light. And it's by Betty Edie. And it was a story of how she passed away for 20 full minutes in her experience. And it gave me so much hope. This is kind of like the first time I heard that when you die, it's just unconditional love waiting for you. There's no judgment. I mean, you go through a past life review, but it's very positive. It's like, how did that relate to love? You know, everything in your life is framed in how does that relate to love? Mm -hmm. And I cried so hard when I read that book of knowing that she's okay. I really felt for the first time, like, okay, she's fine. And then I started having mystical experiences because I was in such a state of quiet. I mean, at that time, believe it or not, now I live this crazy life of, being in the flow and giving angel readings and doing events and parties. And I right. have an amazing time. Right. At that time I had a very traditional life. I was married. I had, a uh, was living in Chicago and I was director of business development for an internet company. And I worked 7 AM till 8 PM. I wore business suits every day <laughs> right next to the board of trade. I mean, I really had a very dramatically different life. I have to tell you, I've, I, you're not the first person that comes on this show. And, and, you know, people that I've known for years, and suddenly I know things about them I didn't know. I mean, that's pretty, you know, you were married, you were working in the corporate world. Yeah. Yeah. And I was thinking to myself, this is pretty boring. And this <laughs> is not what I'm here for. And I even was, you know, that, um, what's the, the the talking head song, you know, when he wakes up, he's like, yes. this is not my beautiful life. This is not my beautiful wife. This is not my beautiful house. How did I get here? That was like me. I was like, wait a minute, this isn't my life. These aren't my friends. This is this isn't what I signed up for. And because my sister, even though it was very tragic that she died, gave me a wake up call and allowed me to get out of the state of being on automatic pilot, kind of like a robot. Oh, this is what you should do. And you just go through life and then you get really wrapped up with work and everything. And then your life is passing you by before you realize it. And you're just paying the bills. And, and I realized this is not it. So I started following synchronicities. <coughs> Excuse me, I think getting a feather in my throat. <laughs> <It's so hard. laughs> she That's literally enough. is getting a feather in her throat, probably. <laughs> yeah, there's, the I wonder, there's so many feathers on this. I know. And um, I, it's, <coughs> okay, there you go. Know that. Yes, I do have a lot of fun with the wings, but sometimes they <clears throat> little fuzz, fuzzes fall off. <laughs> So um, how I started doing angel readings was... Um, you followed synchronicities. I did. Mm -hmm. um, so I started following my passions. That's why I had a wake-up call. I was led to this organization called Landmark Education. <coughs> I took a training course called the Landmark Forum, which really blew my mind. It was about creating a life free from the constraints of the past. Mm -hmm. And it was really power empowering for me. Mm -hmm. And I realized I wanted to be a singer and I wasn't singing. So. Oh, it's, it's just the it's raining pretend of the snow leaves. of California. Yeah. <laughs> Being from Chicago, I love real snow, but yeah. <clears throat> oh my gosh. Bad timing for this little feather to be causing a cough. <coughs> Where was I? You were talking about, um, and I have heard of Landmark Forum, and there's a couple of things you said that I'm, after you're done, I'm going to pull up and we'll talk about with the audience. But uh, I think that you're saying, and, and it really does make sense, and I do talk about this in my blog, about following the synchronicities. You don't need technology to follow synchronicities. You unplugged from the media, which I found, find really interesting, and there's a certain amount of purity that happens uh, uh, mentally when we do that where we can actually we talked about this on a previous show with somebody else where we can hear our thoughts mm -hmm. much much better without that static but you were saying that when you got the past out of your future is yes. that what actually opened you up to I mean I, I'm really interested in and curious about how angels became a part of your healing work yeah so when I started saying I'm interested in doing what I love and following my passion and then I started singing and I declared myself to be a songwriter even though I didn't know how to be a songwriter I'd always sung like jazz and Irish music my dad's from Ireland so he would take me around singing Irish music mm -hmm. in all of Chicago mm -hmm. but I didn't know how to write my own song so I just said I'm a songwriter and then I ended up channeling and I full-on mean like 
an entire album of songs came through me very synchronistically and I called it waking up uh -huh. and then I put it out there and this gentleman said I love your music I'd love to invite you to sing at this metaphysical event uh, like a it's like an expo uh -huh. in Denver mm -hmm. and, and as well as Ashland North Carolina so he booked me for that and then uh, we were talking on the phone one day and he said, I'm going to swim with the dolphins. And I said, I've always wanted to swim with the dolphins. He said, well, just say the word and you can go. And I said, word. And I was totally joking. Next thing you know, he puts me on a three-way call with the travel agent. He's booking this $5,000 trip to Hawaii, the Waikiloa Hilton, this five-star resort, literally $4,995. And when I realized what happened, I'm like, whoa, 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 I can't pay you back. Like, I don't know what you're, he's like, I don't want you to pay me back. This is fully a gift. My only concern is that it's non-refundable and are you really in it? And I just was like, I felt my soul saying yes, even though that's very, you might say, why are you going with the strange man? I felt it my felt, heart and soul right. synchronicity. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I get to Hawaii and it's, um, he didn't tell me this, but it was a retreat called swimming with the dolphins. And it was with Doreen virtue. She, and she's a teacher. She's my teacher. And mm -hmm. she did a private reading for me and said, you're very psychic. You're clear audience. You've been channeling songs and everything just made sense. She said, you could do what I'm doing. And she gave me a scholarship to her angel therapy practitioner course. Wow. And that was, so I took I that. I didn't, I didn't even know you studied with Doreen Burke. Yeah. I took I'm her, familiar with her books and her teaching. Yeah. I'm she's sure the, she's the reason I got into this. So she That's really right. helped me connect with angels and learn how to give readings for other people and know that I've been doing it for a long time. I just didn't know it was readings. By the way, I just want to let everybody know, um, I'll say two things to the audience, that uh, Shishi is going to give me an angel reading, and I'm, I, you've given me one once before, so I'm really excited. So we'll, we'll save that for later. And also, I just want to say, I sometimes forget to say this in the beginning, if you like the show and you want to keep following the show, please send a heart, give a thumbs up so that we know that you're watching. Okay. So, um, yeah, that's fascinating. I wanted to back up a little bit sure. because you mentioned something that maybe would help other people mm -hmm. and maybe they might not have a full understanding of what that is. You talked a little bit about this place that you were in before you had the breakthrough. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the dark night of the soul, I think you called it. Mm -hmm. And is that something that maybe you could share? Because we never know who's watching and it could be that somebody's experiencing something like that and it might help them to know what the signs of that are and that yeah. on the other side of that could be this beautiful breakthrough yeah well the dark night of the soul was kind of like my belief systems collapsing in front of me and also extreme fear for my sister's safety so i was raised as a catholic and a very strict catholic and believe it or not by age 29 i still believed very much you know, that this could, many of these things were true. And one of the things I was taught was if you have sex before marriage, you will, it's a mortal sin and you will go to hell if you haven't gone to confession before that. And I knew my sister had sex before marriage. So that's kind of crazy. Oh. And she was only 20. But, oh, I see. And then I had this fear, like this paralyzing fear, like that. And I actually was, I opened the Bible and I saw just these negative verses and I just got very confused and very, you know, my, I lost my faith a little bit. Like how could God let this happen? And I was really down this, dark space of what's life for and but not in a happy way like like not like what's life for it's like what's the purpose and you know not like I was suicidal but I really was questioning like what are we here for what is the point you know just getting up every day and working your ass off to pay the bills that seems pointless and, and, so, and, and I'm sure that people have those feelings you yeah. know and maybe they don't realize that that there could be a breakthrough or that can change because I think when you're there it, it doesn't feel as obvious. Exactly. And when you are in that space of just working, 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 and it feels a little like hypnosis. And that's why the media fast or the TV fast for me was very important. Because I felt like I was hypnotized. I would go home, watch cable TV, whatever it was, like Flavor of Love. I mean, it was before that, but those kind of crappy shows. And all of a sudden I'd be like, did I really just watch three hours of this BS? Like, And it, I felt like my little eyes were going, Wah! you know. And, and it was taking my life force energy. And I'm not right. saying I'm totally against TV. I watch Netflix TV programs, but the, right. but with the programming, we are being programmed. And that is basically, it's hijacking your brain and your creativity. So you felt like you weren't awake. Yes, Fully exactly. Awake. So right. from that silent place, when I was having no music, nothing and quiet, mm -hmm. and that was my first really experience with true meditation of just being quiet. I was available to hear what was wanting to come through me because mm -hmm. I think humans really were raised to be consumers 
through television and the media and mm -hmm. billboards and everything. And to get entertainment from outer selves to escape from movie, other people's creations. But I don't believe as humans, we're really, really happy unless we're actually creating and generating ourselves. That's why get, that me starting to share my gift and, and write songs was like being reborn. Cause all of a sudden I felt like this is what I'm here for is to create music and share music. And so that gave me a purpose. I and think so that's so true. I think what, what you're hitting on is so absolutely right. I think we're born to create. So even people that aren't necessarily those creative types, I mean, there's still procreation, having children. There's, there's everyday creation. There's recreating yourself. There's, you know, kind of like having create, being a creative person gives you control over your immediate environment Yeah. so that you can start something and finish it. And I think that when people lose that, when they plug into a system, when they punch a time clock, when they when they're taught not to think, I hate to, to be I don't want to be political, but when they're taught kind of to plug in and that that creativity is taken away, I think they kind of they kind of dull down. They kind of go to sleep a little bit. Yeah. So, um, no, it's a beautiful story. Can, can you talk a little bit about what angels really are from mm -hmm. what you know about them? Because you, we were, you, were, you mentioned how all of us have somebody watching over us, an angel watching over us, and I know there's spirit guides and there's all sorts of unseen forces, but, but I don't really know too much about angels. Were they ever alive? Well, some people call spirit guides, I mean, I differentiate between angels and spirit guides. I do believe if you picture one source that we're all a part of the one, which is what we're created by, you know, that if you can picture like a big bang type of thing with these creations coming off of it, angels are light and they're kind of very close to God as mm -hmm. the first thing. And then, and then as we became human souls were much denser energy to become matter in this third dimensional reality on right, earth. Right. So angels are made of light and most of them have not been um, on Even. earth yeah, mm -hmm. as humans. And there are incarnated angels today of people who were uh, of beings who were angels who wanted to be human and come they call we call ourselves light workers people who came to earth. I do believe I'm an incarnated angel mm -hmm. and I believe many of us are that are mm -hmm. here to bring love and light and raise the vibration of the planet to the highest vibration of unconditional love. Mm -hmm. And so I, the primary purpose of angels is to bring love and to, and love is not, is a vibration that is not compatible with fear. And there's a lot of fear on the earth plane right now. So angels primarily are here to help usher us from fear into love and light and peace. That's what they want to do. And, and empower us to be the highest versions of ourselves and have the most beautiful, happiest life we can have. Yeah. And they are very, for me, so comforting. When I was able to release some of the effects of fear that I had been raised in, in this culture of the corporate world of you got to do these things, you must work, 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 you have to make money, you got to hit your quotas, you got to, just, it's so unnatural for humans to be in that, in that environment. And I felt like I was dying, like, you know, really, if I would have continued on that path, I don't know where I'd be today. It was just so inauthentic for me to be pushing, pushing, pushing and sharing something that is not a message of love and light. What is the purpose? Well, it, it is a counterintuitive reality. Right. And so. that's, but it's, there's, there are a group of people and I'm not going to go too into that, that have created that for a reason. And I do believe kind of like the matrix, many humans are like those babies in the matrix with that are being used as batteries for someone else to make a lot of money. It has nothing to do with, with helping those babies have a great life. It has to do with taking their life force energy in exchange for a very paltry amount of fake monopoly money. That's how I see it in a, in a very um, short and So how do you think people can get out of, outside of that system? That's where it takes if a major leap of wondering. faith. Because mm -hmm. when you're in that hypnotized belief system, like this is life, you must do these things in order to have a living and you cannot leave your job or you know, you're gonna be screwed. Like uh, that keeps people in a state of fear. And I call it the golden handcuffs. It's like, oh, you get this paycheck and you don't wanna leave it. So it's like, you're free. America, the land of the free. All of us, we live in a free country and everyone's slaves to their mortgage, their car note, their this or their that. That yeah. is slavery on some. Yeah. And then, you're lucky if you have enough money to go to the movies and maybe buy a few nice things and then you have them on credit and you're a slave to the credit cards. It's a little inane. So there is a way out of that, which is freedom, which is starts with quiet time. 
maybe maybe this is a good time to do those the cleansing that you talked yeah. about because we you know i think first of all i i'm not afraid <laughs> to talk about things that are less than positive because i think it reaches out to everybody not everybody's in a positive place at this the same second everybody else is yeah. so i i think rather than ignoring that it's better to shed light on that to give people the the opportunity to say hey i'm not alone yeah. like maybe this is something that has happened to other people or happened to me happened to you and they can kind of learn that there's a bridge away from that but so she she had mentioned that there's a certain type of uh clearing work that she does she said she wanted to do it on the show i thought it was it's a really really good idea if you guys want to do it with us and then we can move forward and then we can do my reading and i think you talked about doing some sort of song i mean there's so many different things that i think we still have time to cover okay. so great well let's so, do um, there are chakras, seven major energy centers in the body, and a chakra means wheel or disc in Sanskrit. And I learned this from Doreen Virtue way back in the day, 2000, how to do chakra clearings. And every time I do a reading before that person comes to my home, or if we're doing it over the phone, I do a chakra clearing to make sure I'm as, as clear as I can be. Okay. Because it's all about getting my own ego out of the way and my own opinion, and to be a clear channel for God and the angels to speak through. So I'd love to lead us all into that. If you want to just take some deep breaths. So, I, yes, and we hope that you do this with us yes, because with there's us. a lot of benefit and we're in your living room and it's like, you know, you've come to them for a healing or you've come to give them a healing. So yeah, yes, perfect. So just take some deep breaths and breathing deeply is very important because it slows the central nervous system <clears throat> and allows you to be able to hear divine guidance. So just breathe in white light and breathe out dark smoke, all your worries, fears, concerns, breathing in white light. And now let's focus on the root chakra, which is a beautiful ruby red, just you can picture like a Christmas ornament, a ruby red Christmas ornament, but it also is like combined with the ceiling fan type thing. And it goes through the front and the back of you. <clears throat> so we're gonna picture it um, having white light go into it, clearing any darkness or blockages. And the root chakra is your relationship with the physical world. So just breathing in white light, and I'll have you all affirm after me. I allow the light. I allow the light to dissolve away. To dissolve away all fears. All fears. Worries. Worries and concerns. And concerns related to money. Related to money. Security. Security and safety. And safety. I allow the light to dissolve away. I allow the light to dissolve away all fears, worries, and concerns. Fears, worries, and concerns related to money, security, and safety. Money, security, and safety. Just picture the white light clearing that. Perfect. Now move up to your sacral chakra, which is a beautiful orange color, a couple inches above that. That's the seed of sexuality and creativity. Breathing in white light and affirming after me. I'm willing to release. I'm willing to release. All of my needs, wants, and desires. All of my needs, wants, and desires. And allow them to become one. And allow them to become one. With the perfect will. With the perfect will. Of my higher self. Of my higher self. And God. And God. And now we move up to your power chakra, which is a beautiful yellow. You can picture a sun in the center of your being connected to our solar system sun as well as the grand central sun in the center of the multiverses and directly connected to source itself god itself your life is the life of god when you're feeling depressed or disempowered or anything like that it's a great practice to picture a sun in the center of your being and when you are in tune with your own divinity your own divine origins it just melts away all those illusions of problems or or feeling that you don't have a say in your own life so we'll just breathe into the solar plexus and affirm after me. I, I am a powerful being of the light. I am a powerful being of the light. It is safe for me to be powerful. It is safe for me to be powerful. I am a powerful being of the light. I am a powerful being of the light. It is safe for me to be powerful. It is safe for me to be powerful. And now moving up to your heart chakra, which is a beautiful emerald green energy color. Breathe in white light and affirm, I'm willing to release. I'm willing to release. Any fears that I might have. Any fears that I might have. Related to giving. Related to giving. And receiving and love. And receiving love. I love. I love. I am loved. I am loved. 
Now we move up to your throat chakra, which is a beautiful robin's egg blue color and breathe in white light as you affirm, it is safe for me to speak my truth. It is safe for me to speak my truth. I speak my truth with love now. I speak my truth with love now. We move up to your third eye chakra, which is an indigo color, kind of like a navy blue mixed with purple with flecks of white, breathing in white light. This is your ability to see and affirm after me. It is safe for me to see the future. It is safe for me to see the future. It is safe for me to see the truth. It is safe for me to see the truth. Now we move up to your crown chakra, which is a couple inches above the top of your head. It's a beautiful violet color. It's the brightest, kind of like a hot pink purple color. It's the highest frequency color, breathing in white light as you affirm. I easily hear and understand. I easily hear and understand the voice of spirit. The voice of spirit. I listen. I listen. I trust. I trust. I take guided action. I take guided action. I trust. I trust. So that's the chakra clearing. Now you're all lit up like a beautiful Christmas tree, <laughs> ready to shine your light. We, I actually, on the show last week, I had, do you, do you know Parvati? Yes, yes. Yeah, so she came because she has this whole background in Indian philosophy. She's been to India many times. And she also walked us through the chakras, but hers was more, we did chanting. So yours was more visual. So mm -hmm. as you can see, there's lots of different ways to clear and to attach to those energy centers. I mean, it was really mm -hmm. lovely to get to see the colors and to get to hear an actual, you know, to, to kind of get an affirmation. Yeah. So that was really cool. Thank you. And I do have that on my website available free to, for anyone who wants to listen to Why it. Can you tell people what your website uh, is? It's um, divineguidancereadings.com, www.divineguidancereadings.com. So if you want to connect with, with I suggest Shishi. doing it every day if you're wanting to open up to your own psychic gifts and just to meditating and being able to hear your guidance, God, the angels. It's a great way to do it. And you do something on, I, I was going to say this at the end, but it's a good time. You do this on Tuesday nights, right? Don't you I have do, a, yeah. I what do, do you, angel circles. Um, uh, actually, about? we only have one in December because of the holidays, which is this Tuesday in the okay. Hollywood Hills. If you're interested, you can go to my website, divineguidancereadings.com, and send me an email, and I can invite you. But it's a group of people who are learning how to increase their own intuition. So basically empower people with tools on mm -hmm. how they can hear and be more psychic. And we teach teach them how to give each other readings and get, give guidance to each other. It's okay. very beautiful and empowering. So people can, can find information about that on your website. Yes, then. It's on my website. And it, is it normally every Tuesday except for December? Yeah. Mostly. Yeah. Okay. Well, in January, right. we'll be back to the to every weekly. But right now, this month, we're doing one. Right, of course. There's a lot going on this month. It's the holidays. <laughs> it's look the holidays. Look at what's there going is on. There's a lot here. happening, yes. So, And you asked me, you know, what are angels? I really would love to give an experience that's very brief, just a connection to show people an experience of what angels feel like. Okay. So if, if you great. guys want to close your eyes and put your hand on your heart and take some deep breaths. If you're ever stressed, even if you're driving, you know, especially L.A. with the parking lots, trying to go shopping and, if, you know, in traffic, really it's worth it to pull the car over or even just stressed in life at work. Just go in a closet, go in the bathroom, sit on the toilet if you need to, to get away from the, the hullabaloo. Put your hand on your heart and breathe deeply uh, and just allow yourself to connect to the love that is there for you. And you will feel your angels wings surrounding you. So I just want you to feel your angels loving you. Your angels just are all, they're there a hundred percent for you, adoring you. They love every hair on your head. They absolutely love everything about you to get a little tiny taste of that picture, like a baby or a puppy or a kitten, like, or even if you don't have any pets, just like one of those fluffy animal videos on Facebook. And how do you feel? <laughs> I just want you to tune into the feeling of when you see okay. that, don't you feel like, Oh my God, it's so cute. Like this overwhelming feeling of the cuteness is going to kill you. You love it so much. That feeling time multiplied by infinity is how much God loves us, each and every one of us. God loves us. And the angels are there as messengers or an extension of God's love. And they're always available. And you can connect to God and the angels on the breath, breathing, listening, and following guidance. So that's a little, little thing you can do that takes one minute, two minutes that will change your life. And if you really want to have a magical life, you just start every day letting your angels love you first. 
then you'd feel that feeling and you turn that love in on yourself and on your own inner child and just love yourself so deeply. And then you go out in the world, your heart chakra is open and you're there. You see your whole reality changes. Every single person you meet is a brother, sister, friend. And then you have miracles every moment happening. You follow, like I talked about, follow the synchronicities. You just had an idea you want to, you know, meet someone from Google and you guess what? You're in line at the save on or whatever. Right aid and the guy next to you is like, oh yeah, I work at Google. Oh, we have a you know a special lunch date. You should come. That's what happens when you're in that synchronicity flow, and that's where you know that's it happens when... around things that are meant to happen for yes. sure. And and when you talk about those things that fill you with that feeling, you're talking about very innocent things that are kind of close to God. I mean, yes. a baby hasn't really been around for that long. Puppies and kittens are are also the same. And I think that when, I think the more we're here, we get more disconnected and we have to do the work, which, which, um, she, she actually angel, she, she is coming back around to get us to plug that cord back in so that we, you know, because we tend to forget. So yeah. yeah. And everything is made of energy, which is vibration. So what we're talking about, even though we're calling it love and special feelings, is vibrational frequency. That's I have the to fastest tell you a way. story. When uh, one of the things that got me into metaphysical work, uh, I I told this story before. I come from an extremely practical background. My dad was an engineer. I wasn't really given too much information about the world as you and I kind of know it and experience it with synchronicities intuition and i remember when i was like 13 years old i i picked up a book at the library and i think it was called a soothsayer's handbook because i kept taking it out over and over again but it actually showed this is this is really what got me it so it showed pictures of leaves and it showed the auric fields around a leaf mm. and that's when i started making the connection that we do live in an unseen world and that we really are, there. there's this whole energetic vibration around every living thing. Exactly. It was those photographs. And every um, thing is made of waves and vibration. So light is color, color is light. And light is 44 octaves above sound. So every, every color has a song note or sound as well. And that's our, our auras, our, our beings, our beingness has a signature soul song that we're emanating constantly. Uh, you can't hear it with the naked that. ear or the, you can't see it necessarily with the naked eye. Many people can see auras, but we have an energy, primary colors flowing off of us, depending on how clear we are. If you're doing chakra clearings every day, you're going to be bright and shiny. If you're not aware of clearing, you will have picked up on the, the fre frequency of fear that is in the air on planet Earth right now. It's very overwhelming for many people. The uncertainty you know, what's going to happen with our government? What's going to happen with our world? Are the corporations going to start running our, our world now? Because they're, we're, I'm not going to go down the no, dark but, place. No, but. It's, it's true. And um, it, it keeps coming up over and over again on this show that, you know, what can we do? I mean, if, if, if we had done this show, quite frankly, you know, 10 years ago, we wouldn't be discussing this. <laughs> You know, we would be just... We might have been, because that's what I was doing 10 years ago. <laughs> oh. Well, I but think it's okay. that a lot of people were yes, more... Yes, yes, yes. And maybe you know, people are more open to it now, and it's a new time, and you're, you're absolutely right. There's A lot has changed in our uh, political climate and life in general. Yeah. But I was starting to say about vibrational frequency, it's about having the intention to raise your vibration, and that actually changes your dimensional existence from third dimensional free, uh, third dimension which is a lot of it is fear, scarcity, worry, that that's where we are on our current planet Earth. And it has been raising, the planet has been raising, and a lot of people are still in the lower frequency, even though the planet's vibration is raised. And I'm talking about scientifically measurably raising. There's uh, the hertz used to be 7.8 hertz, and engineers use that to determine how much sway needed to be in the Earth, I mean, in the buildings as they were being built. Okay. And now it's 16.33, so it's raising... I think that was the last thing I read, but it is absolutely raising scientifically. And then our frequency, when we choose to keep our, our thoughts in the higher vibration frequencies of love, peace, unity, even when something apparently stressful or crisis happens, asking the question, I wonder what good will come of this, staying in faith rather than going in fear, then we get on the, the we transcend the problems of the world and we go to a new vibration where there are immediately solutions offered 
where the angels can do work and bring us solutions and you know, rush the right people to us or whatever we need are handed to us moment by moment. Because we're in a place of synchronicity. Yeah. So I think what you're saying is that fear actually blocks the synchronicity. Yeah. You so. can't have, they're different vibrations. Fear and love are not si simultaneously able to exist. They're mm -hmm. different frequencies. Mm -hmm. So when you're in fear, it's very hard. I mean, basically it's impossible to have the love frequency exist. But as soon as you raise your thoughts of love to you raise your vibration to thoughts of love and unity consciousness one world one earth everyone connected and how can i be of service you it eradicates it's like what i said with the sun when you picture a divinity in the sun it makes these earthly problems literally disappear like a cloud of smoke they don't exist oprah winfrey did, oprah winfrey said that she she actually said that she just said to to god really because she used the word god use me yeah. How can you use me? Use me. I want to be used for the betterment. I want to be used for good. Yeah, she's amazing. And and amazing. because of that, she has really, um, she's done an incredible amount of good mm -hmm. with she her foundations, really with, you know, so. I, Raising yeah, awareness. Definitely. With talking definitely. about the hard issues. She's done yeah. that. She is yeah. really. Yeah. She's I a mean, hero of mine, for sure. We definitely have that collective. And I think the, that as people plug into that. And as people have, share that kind of philosophy, like, how can I help? Mm -hmm. How can I be a spoke in the wheel? Not just punching a time clock, but actually, like, really just do, do, just doing minor things at home. You know, holding the door for someone, being kind, you know, d being there for other people. It's so simple, exactly. you know. Exactly. I'm so glad you're wearing that. So should we do, um, do we have time? Yes. Do we? I don't know what and time it is, but yes. Let's. Yeah, we can we can do the reading. And... I have many different decks, but I brought with me my angel therapy deck. This is one of Doreen Virtue's angel oracle cards. And my when I took her course, the, the title is Angel Certified Angel Therapy Practitioner. So angel therapy is where the angels um, can solve problems that have been plaguing someone for years and years and years in a session because it's like I'm talking about, it transcends. It doesn't keep you in a low frequency, it transcends. So how I would how I start every angel reading, and I'll do it with you if I can hold your hand. Okay. I like to get someone's energy okay. and breathe in. She, she's cold. To it. Yeah, it is a, <laughs> it's a cool out here. Her wings aren't keeping her warm <laughs> enough. <laughs> well, I have a crepe <laughs> shirt no. on too. Not smart. But I do have a Russian hat on, so that should be help. that's helping the top part of me. The little bit warm. of heat that's left is not escaping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So we invite all the angels and the archangels and all Madison's guides to be with us. And I ask that I be a pure channel and only say the words that will help her on her life path. And so it is. And so it shall be. Amen. Amen. So that way I'm setting an intention. I'm asking to be a clear channel and then I'm available to listen and hear. So how I would normally start readings is asking, is there a question you'd like to ask your angels or would you just like a general reading on what they would, what do the angels want you to know right now? I mean, I probably for the sake of the show, it'd be, you know, we can just do what the angels, what kind of message they have for me right now. Okay. So we can start well, just for the sake of having the cards and showing how this works. I will, I will have you shuffle these cards, put okay. your energy on it. Okay. And while you're shuffling, just have that intention in mind of what the angels want you to know right now. By the way, a lot of readers don't want people to touch their cards. That's something you know, mm. I wanted to talk about on the show at some point. I, when I do readings, I always have people shuffle. So I do it because uh, it's, I want their energy, yeah. not mine. Right. Yeah. So, okay. But then that being said, when I'm on the phone doing readings, I am the one shuffling. Yes. So it doesn't make a difference. It's the intention yes. behind it. But I yes. think it's great when you, yeah. you're in person that they do it. And I also don't have a fear of people's energies because I have unity consciousness, which mm -hmm. is, I believe we're all one. Right. And if someone's in front of me, that means they're a divine assignment and God brought them to me and there are no accidents. And right. so I'm fully right. open and available. Right. right. I think that I share that. I know you. you do. Okay. So you're an Arcangel too. Oh. Okay. So what do I need to know or what message do the angels have for me today or do my angels have for me? Yeah, so. and, the, and the, there are many oracle decks that are more in general about like playfulness or this or that, you know, joy. They might give different general things. This is specifically angel therapy, mm -hmm. which is more like how to help someone transform a way of thinking, a belief system that might be hidden from their view that they aren't aware is affecting their entire life mm -hmm. or things like that. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, Angel She She, here's my reading. Okay, so, so how it works <laughs> is you just would pick a card. Oh, okay. It's not like the tarot the same way. I don't do all the picking. So, okay, so this is heart chakra. The answer that you seek is in your heart right now. Be open to giving and receiving love. So mm -hmm. in this case, I want you to put your hand in your heart. Okay. And Archangel Raphael is here with us. He's a beautiful healing energy and he has an emerald green light coming out of his hands. And he's standing in front of you and he's pouring love into your heart right now. He's wanting to melt away some of the um, past disappointments that you've had in your life regarding not feeling seen, not feeling appreciated, not feeling loved properly, uh, not feeling loved for who you are. He wants you to know you do not have to justify your existence. You're, you are lovable even if you do absolutely nothing just because of who you are is God's creation. You're God's treasured, perfect child of God and feeling that connection to your divine self and he wants to remind you literally that um, it's all about staying centered in your heart and staying in love. That's why we came here on earth is to be love mm -hmm. and to stay in, in that space of knowing all is well. You're perfectly um, protected and provided for at every moment and knowing that your inner child is wanting attention and wanting to feel loved so the angels would love you to spend more time tuning in with that little madison you know picturing times maybe it, you know this could come to you right now is remembering a time when you first started closing your heart because you were you were disappointed or hurt uh, something happened when you were little where it was like it, you didn't maybe get what you wanted and you didn't feel loved like i'm picturing you being little and asking for something and then getting something else and just feeling not seen or not heard and really getting that your needs and wants are important and letting her know you're going to start helping her with her needs and wants and holding her close to your heart. So just close your eyes and picture okay. a little Madison okay. and hold her close to your heart and ask her, you know, in your mind, you don't have to do it loud, but just tuning in with her. Is there anything you need right now to feel loved? What would make you feel loved right now? And then as you do that, you start doing what your inner child needs um, and communicating with her on a, on a daily basis until she feels heard. And then, and then when she feels safe, then you'll be able to be in your heart more and more and more. And then life is a lot easier. So this would be a mini example of a one card reading uh -huh. that the angels want you to focus on staying heart centered and staying in a space of trust and love for yourself and others. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Are we just doing one card? We could do more. I didn't Should know. Do... I actually don't know how much time we I have. Think I think we have, have um, we actually have a, you know, we have like a good 10 minutes. Okay, so. good. Yeah. So, so you can, can shuffle like and pick two more. Yeah. Yeah. Three more. card reading. Just so, so what else do the angels see, want you to know? See how, yeah. Yeah. So see how it works. Yeah. I wasn't aware of that's one thing that happens. I get into a time warp where it's like, I have no idea. It could have been an hour already. I have no, yeah. Yeah. It's okay. All right. So I'll pick. Maybe two more cards. Yeah, is that okay? perfect. This would be my second one, and then this would be my third one. We have a Charlie Brown Christmas tree. <laughs> okay, so the first one is release. Work with Archangel Michael to let go of what no longer serves you or your purpose. So mm -hmm. I just want you to close your eyes. Okay. And Archangel Michael, first of all, Archangel means um, Arch means chief or head in Greek. And angel, as you know, means messenger. So they're, the archangels are the head messengers of different areas. And Archangel Michael works with helping people have the courage to make life changes so mm -hmm. that they're living a really authentic, aligned life. Mm -hmm. And also to let go of things that they're holding on to that may not be serving them. Mm -hmm. So I want you to close your eyes okay. and picture Archangel Michael is a beautiful cobalt blue energy color. And he has a sword of light and truth. Mm -hmm. that cuts away illusion so this in this way you're going to think of since the card is released i want you to think of what you're holding on tightly to in life whether it's a belief system whether it's actual physical things you it know, could just be clutter it can be clutter <laughs> absolutely yeah if <laughs> you're holding on to things that you think you'll need them sometimes yes. we like save things not out of the space of love but out of space of fear like well i might need that i might not have the money to get it you know, or it's not, and then we kind of have a house full of things from the past that are not currently delighting us or bringing us joy, but are just actually 
they don't give us freedom. They actually make us feel, it, it serves sometimes clutter as a guilt trip. Like you never can have the freedom to relax. It's always like, I should be doing this. I should be doing that. I should be organizing this. And it just sits there as like a living right. physical guilt trip yeah. of stuff. Or even like I notice that sometimes, you know, sometimes something will be passed on to you and you feel, you know, you feel bad getting rid of it or, you know, even like anything that you really like, maybe you didn't have attachment towards it at the beginning, but you feel bad because it belonged to somebody. You know what I mean? Oh, I like totally that kind do. Of stuff. Because my mom loves to buy Christmas presents for us and all the kids. And I'm going home to Chicago for a couple weeks in December and she buys many gifts of clothes that I don't necessarily wouldn't buy for myself. Right. And so what I end up doing is bringing them all home. You know, and I'm talking a lot. She we, she has um, six kids or five children. Wait a minute. Six kids left because my one sister passed away. And then 11 grandchildren. When I go home, I'm the Christmas elf and I wrap 150 plus presents. My mom is no joke. She buys that many? Yes. The are, trees you talking are, about, are you talking about like grandchildren too? Yes. Or are you talking about? Grandchildren and children. How many I'm, people is she buying for? Like all you her kids, like all her six kids, people. Yeah, her her kids, their spouses, all, everyone in my family is married except for me and my one brother, uh, and all the children. Yeah, so she's a Mrs. Claus extraordinaire. But you wow. know, sometimes so it's a lot, a lot, a lot of things. Do you guys and she buy just stuff loves, for her? Oh, of course. Yeah. Okay, I just <laughs> she that's she likes she likes to be shown love through gifts as mm -hmm. well as cleaning. That's a big gift for her. <laughs> but anyways, um, yeah, I have a lot of things that I feel guilty about either giving away or not not take treasuring every year without fail at the end of the year it's like this i'm not gonna wear this it's not me yeah. i have a very specific i feel like i'm wearing a costume i mean some people might look at me and think i'm always wearing costumes but i feel like you i'm are. wearing a costume yeah <laughs> but i feel like i'm wearing costume. a costume when it's when it's a really conservative sweater that has a collar up here oh, i don't right. feel happy it's not I feel you. like it's yeah, not a understand. costume that 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 is depicting who you are yeah. and when you share right. it with um whether it's out of the closet or goodwill or some organization you know you are letting it flow back into it and don't be worried about oh this costs this much it has the price down i'm letting a perfectly good I think shirt that's that's actually a big problem i do have so i will buy something and never get around to wearing it and then because the price tag is still on it even if i bought it three years ago even if i bought it on sale even if even if i bought it discounted i i feel bad letting it go yes because i never wore it i do too and i i it just like pains and, and me a part to of give that something that's, with per, a that's a perfect tag. example of release because you're releasing fears that you're not going to have more money coming in to buy more things that you love and if you'll notice, whenever you donate things, more things come flowing in very quickly. That is very true. So it's so great. That's so very, very true. And this card is Heal Away Addiction. Now, I'm confused. Maybe I should have really thought of a question because I, I mean, I, I don't This is for like everyone. This addictions. isn't about addictions. We all have addictions, every single person. So this is going to be for all of us. This okay. isn't personal. Don't take that. This is a, a gift. It says it's time to let go of behaviors that are blocking you from your heart's desire. Ask Archangel Raphael to help you with this healing. Actually, I do. I worry a lot. So yeah. worry could be an addiction. It is. Absolutely. Yes. And it's also an inherited uh, addiction. So if you were raised by someone who worried, 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 it's a way of being that you learn. And mm -hmm. addiction, I mean, That's right. addiction That's isn't right. like a dirty word, like, oh, you're addicted to drugs and alcohol. That's not what this is talking about. We all have addictions. Many people are addicted to TV. They come home, they turn on the TV. Or, or anything, food, you know, I've had my share of addictions with food issues and I'm still <laughs> trying to choose so the highest vibrational any, food. any pattern that you need to change. Any okay. pattern that is keeping you from living yeah. a life of freedom. And these cards are lovely, by the way. I mean, mm -hmm. they, they, they're very, very beautiful. I don't know if, um, I don't know if they can see them, but, but they're, they're gorgeous cards. I mean, yeah. they're very, very Doreen pretty. Doreen has beautiful artists submit their work to her. In mm -hmm. fact, when I was taking one of her courses, my roommate was uh, an artist. She had a five foot by six foot painting in our hotel room and was painting. Later, I saw that in the mermaid deck of hers in a little tiny picture of it. Mm -hmm. But to see it happening in real life while it was being painted and then to see it in her book, and she always acknowledges the artists in her description so there's are they usually different people they're all different oh, people wow. from wow. all around the world that submit their wow. angel paintings that's so I, that cool? I didn't know that yeah no. and then um, she promotes the artists in, in the back of the book uh there's two more things i wanted to bring up because i saw she she do an angel reading for someone who had lost their father and you actually brought in 
that that deceased relative mm -hmm. was actually standing there. Did you see that deceased relative or did you feel the deceased relative? I don't know if you remember. But... Yeah, yeah. Um, and at that other event, that security guard came up to me and just asked for a quick reading and his sister came through and he ended up crying in my I arms. I remember you told me that. I mean, and he was like, yeah, so yeah. Because I was waiting that's for you a little that different. That, that yeah. is angels, but it, this is a different area, which is called mediumship, which also I can use this gift of Clear audience is one of my primary gifts, which is clear hearing. Mm -hmm. Clear voice is clear seeing. So cl I don't see the loved ones. Sometimes I get an idea of what they look like, but I'm not like, I don't close my eyes and see. Actually, it's hard to explain. It's like seeing with the mind's eye. But I will just hear, um, not like a voice outside my head, but a loving voice from within um, giving me information. And often that information could crack open someone's heart and bring massive healing to their lives. So that's mediumship where a deceased loved one, that's not an angel that I call that is either just deceased loved one or a spirit guide. If it's someone like a grandma who's really involved in your life that passed away and really is like one of your cheerleaders. One of your angels. Exactly. You, know? you can call an angel, right. but it's more like a spirit guide. Right. But it's interesting because obviously what we know about Shishi is she, she works very easily with the unseen. So that's yeah. really nice. Yeah, that is real to me. The unseen is real because I've had so many undeniable experiences of miracles and synchronicities that are just literally undeniable. I cannot even question anymore. Yeah. It's totally as real as this table well, is most, to me. Most of us move through life with that belief system. And I, you know, I know for myself, if I didn't follow the signs, I wouldn't be where I am. Yeah, on any level, I would be yeah, back in Philadelphia working for a dentist. Wow, so, see, and I'd yeah. be in Chicago, like battling yeah. the snow. Yeah. So, so just, I would love to just complete this for everyone, okay. including you. So, if you just picture something that you feel attached or addicted to that might be controlling you uh, on some level, where you feel a compulsion, you have to do it. Um, Archangel Michael is here with his sword of light and truth. And it kind of has these webs and cords attached to whatever it is. So in your mind's eye, picture that from your abdomen area, these webs and cords and roots that are attached to this particular thing that you must, must do, that you that it has been really stopping you from living this highest version of your life. And if you're willing to release this addiction, I just want you to repeat after me, Archangel Michael. Archangel Michael. I'm willing to trade pain for peace. I'm willing to trade pain for peace. And just picture that whatever it is, that feeling, that way of thinking, that um, drugs, alcohol, sugar, caffeine, television, entertainment, sex, anything that you feel is controlling you. If you're willing to release it, uh, Archangel Michael is going to cut the cords between that and you right now. So take a deep breath. <sighs> Archangel Michael's cutting the cord. Take another deep breath and just release and let it go. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes you'll feel um, like a major difference. And, and then if it's been something you've been doing for many years, it might come back a little bit. But every time it comes back, you just stop before you go for the same thing you used to do and ask Archangel Michael, please cut my cord again. And you'll see it lessons and lessons and soon you'll be free. Okay. Did you want to use a vocal, some vocal work? Oh, I don't call it work, but sure, I'd be happy to channel. Or did you say, well, we only have like, I think you said the song was like a minute or. We were yeah, I don't have a song in mind. I was just going to kind of channel a little bit. Yeah. Of singing that, angels. That'd be great songs. for the okay. last like minute or so. Is there one minute? Yeah, oh, about okay. that. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> You are love, you are light, you are one with God, you are beautiful, you are one, you are, you are one with all that is, and peace is within you, peace is within you. Shine your lights, dear beloved ones. Shine so bright, you are loved. Hi.
think we should have done that for the whole time. <laughs> that was really nice. Do you have an album with that kind of music where you're singing like that? I have an album, not like that, um, but of, of songs I channeled. Uh, it's called well, clear it's on itunes okay so you, and my name on that is she she is my nickname my real name is sheila o'donnell so if you search sheila o'donnell and the album is called clear you can hear some of my music oh my god that was i'm so glad that you did that oh, song because you. i that was I, i'm waiting for everybody in la to come running over here <laughs> the sound of the angels? everybody in la is going to come here <laughs> well in this area <laughs> and I do have a special on readings. If you want to get a reading, it's only $44 for a half hour now through December 15th. Okay. You can go to my website, divineguidancereadings.com or $88 mm -hmm. for an hour. Mm -hmm. I can do it in Beachwood Canyon in the Hollywood Hills at my home, or you can do it um, over the phone. And maybe if somebody pays, you'll sing for them. <laughs> I actually do. Uh, <laughs> that was really channel, amazing. Uh, songs in my readings wow. with people. Wow. Yes. No, I, I can, you know, when you talk about, about sound having vibration, you can feel the healing quality of it. It is. It's very healing. So we have to say goodbye. I, again, I'm so grateful. She, she, Angel, she, she, yeah. Sheila O'Donnell, that she, that you have come and joined us today for our kickoff Christmas special. Again, this is Metaphysically Speaking with Mystic Madison. Please send a heart. Please like us. And um, you can connect with this beautiful person through her website. You want to say yes. it one more time? DivineGuidanceReadings.com. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Madison. Oh, and Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to all of you. Remember, stay in your heart and spread the love. All is well. We'll be here next week for Sage's Rule. Sage's Rule with Justin. Yeah, with He's Justin. so amazing. You guys are in for a treat. Right. And I'm a Sag. He's a Sag. Our birthday's two days apart. So we're and going to do friends, it all And my best friend, so six Sages. years old, is a Sag. That's why I always love Sag so much. Because you're Gemini. Gemini and Sag are totally complimentary. Yes. And so if you'd like to hear more about Sag's and other signs and how other signs relate together, join us next Saturday at 3 o'clock. Ciao. Ciao. <laughs> Bye. Mwah.